Hello and welcome back. Today it's time to finally start simulating circuits with the TL431. Now if you haven't seen them, please watch the previous two videos in which I analyze the available datasheets and models and then proceed to create my own model. And that model is the one that I'll be using in today's LTSPICE simulations. So if you're curious about what are the typical circuits that you can build with this integrated circuit, then keep watching. Now the very first thing that you'll notice in the datasheet is that the TL431 is a programmable precision reference. Now these are some really fancy words. So what do they actually mean? Well, let's try simulating something. Now if you want a voltage reference in your circuit, you want a stable voltage that you can work with, I don't know, compare it to something else or use it to drive a power supply, the easiest way is to use a Zener diode. So what I got here is a voltage pulse going from 0 to 30 volts, supplying a 10 volt Zener diode. Now if we run this, we can see our increasing pulse and we can see the voltage on the Zener diode. So after a certain point, the Zener diode will stabilize the voltage and you get your reference. Now if we look at this a bit more closely, we notice a few things here. So the Zener diode doesn't immediately turn on, there's a certain slope to it. And there's not just a slope, it doesn't stabilize. I mean, the voltage on the Zener diode doesn't stop dead at 10 volts, it slowly increases, so it gets up to 10.4 volts in this circuit arrangement. So it's not really stable. Another thing we can notice is if we run the simulation in temperature and we zoom in a bit, we'll notice that the voltage on the Zener diode is also temperature dependent. So if you build a circuit and you try it out in the winter or if you try it out in the summer, you'll get different results. And that's not something that a reference should do. I mean, in some cases you don't care, but if you want something better, then you can try the TL431. So here on the right side, I got a similar circuit. So I'm supplying for a one kilo ohm resistor. Then I got my TL431 and a couple resistors to set the output voltage. And if we look on the output voltage on this circuit, we see a completely different behavior. So if we zoom in, at 10 volts, almost exactly, the voltage on it flattens out. So you no longer get that rising slope. Difference being that for the Zener diode, the voltage drop is current dependent. Whereas for the TL431, it doesn't really care about the current. Another thing you will notice is that even though we change the temperature, the voltage stays roughly the same. So it's just a few millivolts of change. And this is in agreement with what we see in the datasheet. So the datasheet tells us that the voltage deviation over temperature, depending on the version of IC you're using, can be somewhere between 3 millivolts and 30 millivolts. So if you really want a very stable, very precise voltage reference, the TL431 is a good choice. Now, one of the things that we saw in the title of the datasheet was that it's programmable. Now, in today's world, programmable means it has something to do with software. But in this case, you program the IC using the external resistors. So when you have a Zener diode, if you have a 10 volt Zener diode, it's a 10 volt Zener diode. You can do nothing about it. If you want a different voltage, you need a different diode. With the TL431, you can set any voltage between 2.5 and around 36. So with the resistors I've chosen, I get 10 volts. If I choose a different value, let's say 10 kilo ohms, I should get 5 volts. If I choose again a different value, let's say 70, it stabilizes at 20 volts this time. Now there is a proper formula for this, so you don't just have to try out random values, and it's found here in the datasheet. And basically with this formula you can set any sort of reference voltage. 
So it's a glorified Cener diode. Well, not just a Cener diode, it can do far more things. Let's try another application. One of the things you'll find in the datasheet is its use in series voltage regulators. So something like this. Let's try simulating this one. So the simplest series regulator that you can build with a Zener diode, so if you don't have the TL431, looks something like this. Basically, it's extremely simple, transistor, diode, resistor, that's it. And this will provide roughly stable value. The output voltage of this will be the voltage on the Zener diode minus the voltage drop on the base emitter junction. And we can see that it's sort of stable, but it's also sort of not stable. So with increasing the input voltage, the current through the circuit increases and you'll get a slightly different voltage. Now you can replace the Zener diode with the TL431, as we've seen in the previous circuit. This will slightly improve things. So you now get a flat output voltage, but if you simulate in temperatures, right now I'm running a minus 40 and a plus 100 degrees Celsius simulation, we see two different output voltages. Now the TL431 is giving us a stable output voltage, but the voltage drop on the base emitter is temperature dependent. So we can simply look at this and we can see this voltage difference. Now, we don't need to use the TL431 just as a Zener diode as a reference. We can take advantage of its input pin. So we don't need to measure the voltage that drops on the cathode anode. We can directly measure the voltage that drops on the output of our stabilizer. So basically the difference between the middle circuit and the one on the right is where these feedback resistors are placed. I'm no longer measuring the voltage on the TL, I'm measuring the voltage on the output. And if we look here, we have perfectly flat output voltage regardless of temperature. So using this circuit, basically we are compensating for the voltage drop also on the base emitter of the transistor. Or in other words, we've built a proper linear regulator. It's just that the fixed voltage reference and the op amp are contained inside the TL431 and we're using its reference pin to measure the output voltage through a feedback network. Okay, so we can build series regulators, but we can also build shunt regulators. So the TL431 on its own will be a shunt regulator. We can add transistors to enhance this effect so to get higher currents, but we can also turn it into a constant current sink. So if you want to build a really fast, really simple circuit to sync some current, you can use this IC. Basically, I've built just that over here. So the input voltage is again the 0 to 30 volt pulse. And if we run this thing, we see our basic circuit. And if we look at the current going through the collector, after the circuit has enough voltage to operate correctly, the current is flat. Basically, what the circuit is doing, it's measuring the voltage drop on R3 and it's giving a command signal to our transistor so that this voltage stays stable. And of course the voltage drop on this resistor is proportional to the current going through the circuit. Now the problem with this arrangement is that the current going through the circuit is not very reliable. I mean it takes a while to get the current going through the TL431 at at least one milliamp so we can guarantee stable operation. We can enhance the circuit by supplying the circuit from two different places. So on one side we got the voltage that we're sinking current from and on the other side I'm using another voltage source to supply the TL431. By using this arrangement again we get perfectly stable flat current but we can get it at much lower voltages compared to our first circuit. So we see that it's starting to operate much faster and the current drawn by the TL431 is now constant, so it's flat. It no longer depends on the input voltage. And of course, we did this by replacing an op amp and the voltage reference with the TL431. 
So all three circuits do exactly the same thing. The only problem with using the TL for this sort of circuitry is the minimum voltage drop. So to get the comparator comparing something, you need to achieve the 2.5 volts that the reference voltage has on your shunt resistor. So if you build this sort of current source, the minimum voltage drop on it would be 2.5 plus whatever drops on the transistor, so around 3 volts. If you want to build a current source for 5 volts, then this is perfect. If you want to build it for 1 volt, eh, it's not really good then. Now, looking for the data sheet, there's a couple other applications, but this one stood out. Basically, what they've built here is an audio amplifier with what's basically a voltage reference IC that is used for power supplies. I mean, does this actually work? Well, I went ahead and built it in the simulator and I'm applying a plus minus 10 millivolt sine wave and on the output we have a plus minus 3 volt sine wave. So you can get this circuit to amplify. And of course this circuit is relying on the fact that the TL431 has a bandwidth of almost 1 MHz. So depending on the supplier it can be more or less than 1 MHz. So you can very easily amplify signals in the audio range as long as you choose your gain correctly. Now the TL431 is good for a number of applications. So ranging from power supplies to current sinks and so on. So datasheet contains a lot of other things. So go check those out. Speaking about power supplies, maybe I'll build a power supply with it. I mean something a bit more complicated than we've just seen. That's a project for another time. But for now, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.